Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 All right. So, oh, first, uh, I want to welcome any first-time guests that we may have. Uh, we've got some people that I haven't seen in a while. And I don't see any first-time guests. Uh, maybe one. Maybe one. Yeah, I see one. Hello, first-time guests. No, I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just uh, welcome to Life Point. So, but uh, hallelujah, I'm blessed this morning. Are you? Amen. Man, I'm blessed. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see the growth that our church has gone through. That our pastors are out of town and we still just pick up, you know, in the spirit, and we just and we still have the same amount of fun and the same amount of enthusiasm, and people are still coming and, and they're not, you know, passes away. I'm chilling at the house. You know, uh, fast as the way, you know, football just ended, so I guess I couldn't show you. You know, thank God. Thank God that you're here. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to try to try not to be too silly. Try not to be too silly. You know, if you, so, if you know me, you know I, I, I get kind of ignorant sometimes. So. <laughs> ignorant. So, and, uh, and so once you really get to know me, Crystal, Crystal can tell you how, how ignorant I can be. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Let, let, me, get it, let me get it to your message. Here we go, here we go, here we go, I promise, here we go, we ready, we ready, deep breath, like Mr. Dean, deep breath, here it is, all right, so this morning, we, uh, we just had a wonderful conference last week, the Three Degrees training, if you were able to make it, uh, you were very blessed, if you weren't, I hope you caught it on live stream, I was blessed a couple times watching it on live stream with the, kid, oh, excuse me, with the kids at the house, excuse me, twice, uh, and I was just thoroughly blessed, thoroughly blessed with all the information that they gave us, and uh, one thing that they talked about was uh, uh, positioning. And uh, when I thought about, when they were talking about how if you're three degrees off your course uh, at a minimum, you will, at a certain point, you will never reach your destination. It'll be too late, you know? And so you want to make sure that you're in the right position to get to where you're trying to go. So the first step to get to where you're trying to go is know where you're going, right? <laughs> you want to know where you're going and then your second, your second uh, task is to position yourself to how to get there. So we're going to be talking about being positioned for destiny this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, position, as a noun, it is a place where something is, or, some, or something is located, or where something has been put. So, uh, and as a verb, uh, positioning, a position is to put or arrange something or someone in a particular place or way. Right, so when we're thinking about positioning, we think about destination first, first and foremost, as, as, as children of God and as, and as people. So if my if my goal is to get to that that table over there, my position has to be facing towards the table, you know. So like we were saying, three degrees off, say, you know, I'm walking outside and the wind blows me this way. If I don't take the step to correct myself to get back to that table, I'm going to walk straight into Kelsey. You know, and so it's very important to always be cognizant and always be thinking about what you're doing and, and whether you're on task and whether you're in position. You know what I mean? So, so let's take that back to another uh, another uh, example. So, my position today was to to come up here and speak. I was asked last Sunday uh, by PT to to speak, and I said quickly said yes, you know, whereas in the past I would have been like, can you find somebody else? <laughs> like, like, in a heartbeat. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to feel good next Sunday. I don't, I don't know. I don't lose it. <laughs> Miles been coughing in my face all week, so. Uh, so, and so, uh, put Miles under the bus there. Uh, and so, uh, so my position had to be ready to be up here. So I had to, I had to do what had to be taken to stand up here. So even though it's not a physical Place, it, is, it is a spiritual place that I knew I had to, and a mental place that I knew that I had to prepare for if I was going to make it up here and present something worth uh, your time, you know, and, and worth, you know, and, 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 and of course I had to be led by the Spirit to do so. And so, in doing that, to put myself in a position to do this, I had to study, I had to read, I had to set aside time, I had to limit distractions. You know, I had to put the kids to bed earlier so I could have time to do it. You know, I had to wash dishes so when my wife gets home, I'm not in trouble. You know, <laughs> you know so we, we be arguing and I'm all out of, out of the spirit now because I'm mad. You know, you know, y'all know, y'all know. Yes, I do. Don't lie to me. All right. So, <laughs> and so that's, those are things that you have to, you have to think about. So, 
So when you think about position, you, the first question that come to, came to mind when I was writing was, uh, what positions am I? You know, you're not just one thing. You know, I'm a, I am a father, you know, I am a husband. You know, I'm a husband first, then I'm a father, you know. I am a son, you know, I'm a brother, I am a brother-in-law, <laughs> I am an uncle, you know, I am an employee, uh, I am a, a, a bunch of different things. And so when, you, when you're thinking about what's important to you, all those positions play a factor. So, so when, my, when PT asked me um, to speak, you know, as his son, I could find a way to back out of it because I've been doing it all my life. You know, I'd be like, he'd be like, hey, son, can you, can you come mow my grass? And I'd be like, I don't know, Dad. I don't, I don't. You know, but as, as, uh, as him as my pastor, I, I can't do that. I, I have to honor him and honor his wishes. And so, and so when, you, when you're thinking about that, you have to always think about where, where, where that person is in, in your life and the role that they're playing in your position under them. You know, so does that make a little more sense? So, so, you know, you have to, so, and, and, and again, him as, him as, uh, he's, I'm also employed by the church and he is my boss. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I can't, I can't let all those things cross lines, you know, when they're not supposed to. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And so, um, so what positions do you have and what is the importance of those positions? So who are you, uh, to somebody, you know, what are you, who are you to your, to your job? You know, is, you know, are you doing the best job that you can in your position, you know, for success? You know, if, if the one thing that I've, when I've, I've learned uh, when I was, when I started trying to uh, uh, get back into shape a long time ago, when I, and I was, I, they, there was a saying, there's always a bunch of sayings, like in all, all those, you know, motivational quotes and stuff like that. Like, the one that stuck with me was uh, how you do anything is how you do everything, you know? So if I wake up late, you know, I'm going to get to the gym late. And if I, if, I, if, I, if I blow off, you know, small appointments, I'm going to blow off big appointments. You know, if I have excuses for, for small things, I'm going to have excuses for everything. You know, anything I don't feel like doing, I'll make up something so I ain't got to do it. You know, and I've, I've been there, I still, I, still, I still do it sometimes, you know, even now and then. And, uh, but that's, that's, and that's held true for me in my life. How I do anything is how I do everything. And so you have to be intentional and positional minded to be thinking, is, is, this, is this position that I'm in right now, is how I'm handling this position going to get me to my goal, to get me to a place of success in Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. All right. So ask yourself, if no one is here to be me, then who would suffer? Wow. Who, who would suffer as a result of you not doing what God has called you to do? The Lord said, I mean, the Bible says that, that God gives us the desires of our hearts. And when I, when I first heard that, I've always thought that, that, we just get what we want. You know, we, oh man, I, I want this car. That's the desire of my heart. No, God gives you the desires of your, the, the things that you want the most in life are things that are given to you by God. Amen. If I want to, if you want to be successful, that desire for success comes from God. That desire for love comes from God. That desire for peace comes from God. He gives you those desires. And what, what you do in that position is what would cause you to get the things that, if you, if you, if you do it correctly and you're, and you're intentional, and you're, then you become successful and all those other things. But God gives you the desires to be greater than what you are. Yes. Not things. He gives you, he, things come as a result of that, but things are not what is important. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, okay, so someone in our home for, first home point meeting, uh, when we, we were discussing this Wednesday, uh, they talked about how when they first came to our church, they didn't, uh, they felt a little taken aback by the, by the, you know, how we like to greet and hug and, and just our, 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 our natural just uh, enthusiasm. And, you know, they, they weren't taken aback by it, but they were surprised by it. And it kind of made, you know how people in your personal space makes you uncomfortable sometimes. You know, I, I know I do. I don't like people up, all up on me like that. <laughs> Y'all family, so it's different. So, <laughs> so we could. But every, every, I'm not like that, you know, and most people are. So, but, but when you come in here, you better get like that, right? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we're going to be up on you. Amen. We're going to love on you. <laughs> but now this person is a greeter, right? And so now they are super enthusiastic. They're hugging and loving. And, and, and why? Because the greeter that was there did their job. When she came in the door and kept doing their job every time she came through the door, and then, by the time it became her job to do it, she was already on board. Amen? Amen. Amen. So who, what if nobody was there, though? What if this person walks through the door, 
and nobody says hi, nobody gives a hug, nobody, you know, say how my name is or, you know, takes them out or, and, and, and talks to them. What do they just come sit in the back? They're a wonderful service. Everything else could be wonderful. The praise and worship could be awesome. The word could be awesome. But there's no connection. There's nowhere to make a connection. So what do they do? They walk right back out of the door, you know? And so being, being fully aware of your position is, is vitally important. And, and realizing if nobody's there, then who is going to fill that void? You know, if I'm, if I'm not doing what I'm called to do, who is going to do it? Who is going to suffer because I'm not there? Amen. Amen. All right. So who you are is how you handle your position. Amen. We just talked about how you do everything is how you do anything is how you do everything. Who you are, if you are a complainer, you're going to complain about your position. Amen. I'm not, and I'm not telling you anything that I haven't done or I'm trying to get delivered from right now. Amen. 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 So, you know, if you are late, you know, if you are, are, are chronically late, you're going to be late in your position. Amen. You, go, you, you just, you're going, going to look around and, and nobody's going to be there until you get there. And who knows how many people have already passed, how many opportunities have already passed you by because you were late. You know, if you're lazy, you're going to be lazy in your position. I remember, oh, man, I'm in Rice work at Costco. Shout out to Costco. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I was a, <laughs> I was a, a, a stalker. Uh, and, this is, and this is another thing, this is another point that, that just the Holy Spirit just kind of brought to me, but I'll bring it up in a second. I was a stalker. I started off as a stalker. Morning, I used to wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, get there. We'd start work at uh, around 3.30. And... We had to hustle and bustle, get everything, get everything going and everything going. And, I, and at first, when I first got there, I was all about it. I was, I was stacking up big boxes of juice and detergent and water. And just and Costco doesn't sell anything small in small quantities. Everything is huge. So you just, you are, you got to be in shape. You know, if you, if you want to do something like that, be in shape. Because it is, it is a tough job. But I would get there and I would stock and I was so, enth so enthusiastic. And then after a while... You know, you get to settle in with your coworkers, and then you got the, you got your you got your clicks, and you got your different personalities, right? So you got the one person that's that's always complaining and whining about something. You know, uh, some so and so didn't drop this over here, so I, I'm going to be behind and blah blah. blah and, and and after a while, at first I was like, man, it's not that big a deal. You can you can pick it up if, if you need help. You can call. Me. And then after a while. I started listening, listening. After hearing it so much, I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. So-and-so doesn't do their job <laughs> like they're supposed to be doing. Now I'm behind, just like you behind, because so-and-so ain't doing their job. Man, that, that don't make no sense. Somebody need to do something about this. This is out of line. And so after a while, I became that person. You know, I became a complainer. So what I would do is I would get home, and my lovely wife, would, you know, would do something and I'd be complaining because it's just on me now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing everything that's wrong with everything in my life. And I mean, I got something to say about it, you know? Amen. And it ain't the right thing. Hallelujah. And so, and so it's, it's very important, you know, to, to really guard how you do things because, because who you are is how you're going to do it. Amen. So you got to, so you got to get in that word and find out who you are, right? Amen. 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 All right. Next is know your position. Know it. Study. If you want to be something, study what you're going to be. Amen? Yeah. Man, if you want to be up here and we're going to have minister's class pretty soon. Uh, man, I, I remember I was going through minister's class. We had to read a book <laughs> called uh, God's Generals. You know, and the, and the one that we had, it was good. It was good. But the, the one was, it was the, the one that we read was uh, why some succeeded and why some failed, yeah. right? And so why some, and people that failed all had something personally that they did not want to change yeah. or they couldn't change, yeah. you know, or they felt like they couldn't change because it could have, with, with God, all things are possible and you just have to walk it out, but they just couldn't. And so after a while, man, people died from diseases, uh, the ministries were torn down from scandal, 
and, and just all kinds of stuff that is, is avoided by changing who you are and not letting who you are, you know, get out of control, you know? You got to nip that stuff in the bud, you know? Hallelujah. You know, I got so I used to uh, we'd be talking in uh, at home point again. If, you, if, if another plug for home point, you know, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, ours would be on the 20th, 220, uh, at 62 Park Creek Court. <laughs> uh, but it was, it's, it's, it's good. But I, I used to have uh, real bad anger issues, really bad. No. Oh, man. <laughs> no, not me. No, no. You know, you can't trust light skinned people sometimes. Man, they'd be, they be mad. They'd be mad at the world. No, I'm just like, I'm just I was just play, but but but, but being, being honest, we, I was I, I used to I used to get into fights all the time in school. I used to I used to <laughs> all the time. I was always suspended from school. Always suspended from school. I'll tell you some stories. I'm like, you, you can ask my mama. I'm like, <laughs> I got some stories for you. But but I, I was I was always you know I was never a troublemaker. You know. But I was always in trouble, you know. <laughs> I was like, uh, just somebody found found trouble and just brought it my way, and I just, you know, and yeah, yeah, most definitely. Or one time it ended me, so <laughs> one time it, it got me. So I mean, okay, I'm gonna tell the story and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna move on. Hallelujah. Okay, sit over here. So one time I'm I'm 13 years old, and uh, I was moving from Winston Salem, North Carolina, which is this is a small town. And uh, it's pretty, it's it's pretty rough. The, 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 uh, we lived on the east side, which is which is extremely rough. I, I actually took my wife to this past summer to show you where I used to stay, and they were like, just shack after shack after shack, and police cars, and just riding by. That's why we were driving, and I'm like, yeah, this is where I used to live. And then, uh, uh, so we, I moved from there. We moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and Tulsa was, you know, whenever you whenever you think you grow up in a tough neighborhood, you think you're the toughest person in the world. You know, and, I, and I've already, at this point, I'm like, like I said, I'm 13, so I, I have not lived life, but I, have, I know I haven't been beat up before, so I, I, must be, I must be tough, you know, I must know how to fight, right? So, I'm walking, my brother, me and my brother, my younger brother, David, he's five years younger than me, so he's eight years old at the time. And I used to have to walk him, uh, when we got, because we got off to school at the same time, I'd have to walk him from our bus stop to the apartment complex. And uh, my sister was sick, she was at home, and it was just me and him. So this kid is picking on my brother. This kid is this kid is humongous. This kid is he he was he was no he was not he was not my size. He was not he was probably Eric's size at 14. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I said this is my story and that's how I'm gonna tell it. So he was Eric's size at 14 and I was 13 like this tall. Okay, and so and so I'm sitting there. He's walking. I'm we walking and this kid is picking on my brother and. You know, it's one thing that, that my mom and dad have always told me, don't not let nobody mess with your brother or your sister, because I'm the oldest. And so he's picking on him, and my brother's like getting really mad, and, and, so, and so I turn around and I say, blankety blank, if you don't stop talking to my brother, I'm going to throw your blank through that window. I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. Because I knew I wasn't going to pick this kid up. I knew I wasn't going to do it. And so he goes, boom. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm knocked out. And he's like, just on me. He's just on me, just, just beating on me. I'm like rolling and tucking and blocking. And, and, and uh, I don't know how I got here. But, <laughs> but, but we but we here. I was out of position. That's, that's, I'll just say that. <laughs> I, was, I was upright, and then I was on the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, man. Hallelujah. I know your position. Know your, know your role and shut your mouth. That's what the rock would say. <laughs> oh, man. Is that the first rock reference we've had up here? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so again, speaking to knowing your position. So, uh, PT, as we alluded to before, uh, he is my pastor and he is my father. So, for, for me in my life, uh, his role as a pastor comes first in my life. You know, I've, whenever he says something, I, I look at it as, as his, him being the pastor as, as opposed to him being my father. Because a lot of times, uh, I don't want to disrupt, you know, 
uh, his anointing, and, and what, and especially when we're in here, whatever he says to me is law. Whether you just me get up and walk to the back of the, out, out the door, or do some, you know, whether he, it's because you know that is it is it is very important. It's very vital for me to protect what he has here, and 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 again is that you have to be able to decipher the difference. There's plenty of times where I've been out and about, and I and I call him pastor instead of dad, you know, and we're not even in church, you know, we're not or in, or in the office, or we're, we're just out and about. Just because you know the Holy Spirit is constantly talking to me as to how I should revere Him and how I should how I should respect Him, and uh, so it's, it's important to know. Uh, let me see. All right. So knowing your position, we're gonna uh, turn to Psalm. Let me get some scripture up in here, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Psalm eighteen. Blessed. We're going to start at verse 31. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get there, just say amen or amen. make some noise. All right. So it reads For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who's, who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. And he makes my feet like the feet of the deer and sets me on my high places. So when I read that, I was like, I, I never read it as my high place. I just always said read it as sets me on high places. And so when I read it, I was like, so they're, they're my high places. When you, when you read it, it says he sets me on my high places. So where your position is, you know, one thing about your positioning is that it's somewhere up high. Right. So where are you? So where are you? Where are you right now? Are you in your high place, or are you positioned? Or do you know where your high place is? Because if you have if you have a goal and you're trying to reach it somewhere, then you're not at your high place yet. I'm definitely not at my high place yet. Definitely not. Definitely not. I want to be a, a business owner. I want to be a. I'm on my way to being a minister. You know, well, I am a minister, but I'm on my way to being more and more fully involved in ministry. And so that's, a, that's another place that I'm positioning myself to be towards, you know. That's another reason why I couldn't decline right here. Because uh, especially when God gave me the, the, the word of positioning, I was like, well, if I'm going to if I'm gonna say I want to be a minister and I want to minister the word, then I can't decline an opportunity to minister the word. Amen. 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 And so when you're thinking about your high place, what is your high place? Where is it that you, that God has set your eyesight and your sights towards that you know that you have to reach as, 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 as the desire that God has put into your heart? Amen? Positioning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, God will always place you in front of a position that you can walk into or walk out of. Amen? Because he's going to give you a choice. So we'll get, we'll get into that a little bit, a little bit uh, yeah, here in a little bit. Uh, so uh, turn to me, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28, 13. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just give me amen when you get there. Uh, amen. Amen. Cool, cool. All right. It reads, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and shall be above only. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and you are careful to observe them. Amen. So, it's going to lead me to my next point here in a second. But my next, my, uh, before that, I just want to say, uh, play your position. Play your position. When you're in position, play your position. Hallelujah. You know, I am a big basketball fan. Big basketball fan. I love playing. I've been playing since I was man, probably six years old. And I take it very seriously. You know, I remember when, when your coach tells you to do something, you better play your position. <laughs> Or you're not gonna play, amen. And that's and we don't see it like that because we don't see the stakes that are at odd. When you're in a game, you see I don't want to lose to this team, you know. Especially if they're a rivalry, or 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 you know, or, or for whatever reason. But when you can't see the stakes, it's harder for you to, to think about playing your position. So when when coach tells me, you know, I want you to hedge that hedge that flare screen and and uh get out on the defender, then 
and I don't do it, I just stay, I stay underneath the screen. Well, I don't know if you guys understand basketball but, but, but screens. If I stay underneath the person that, that is trying to stop me from getting to my, my person that I'm trying to guard, then, and, and the guy scores, then I didn't listen to him. You know, and if, and, if, and if I can come up with any excuse as to why I, I couldn't get out there or why didn't, maybe the guy was too big for me to get around, uh, maybe he's faster, maybe he's better, you know, but I have to find a way to get it done or I'm out the game. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, and so God, uh, God is our coach. God is a good coach. Yes. Amen? Yes. And a good coach doesn't just motivate you, he instructs you. Amen. I got that from uh, Stephen Furtick. <laughs> if you heard of him. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Pretty good. So I was blessed by that. So thanks, Stephen. Uh, so what do we do with God's instruction when we get it? Amen. It goes like goes back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. What what do we do uh, with God's instruction? There are some people who know what to do with God's instruction or with God's uh, opportunities, and some who need direct instruction. So we're gonna gonna find out. Look at somebody who needed instruction, amen. So we're gonna turn to. Oh, we don't have to turn to the book of Jonah. I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of skip. That. I don't want to take up too much time. But uh, in the book of Jonah, Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh to do what? Amen. What was? What, why didn't Jonah go? Uh, so he goes to where? He goes to Tarshish instead of Nineveh, right? So he leaves from Joppa to go to Tarshish. And when I was looking at this, it was so funny uh, because from Joppa to go to Nineveh is 550 miles to, from, 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 the, from where he was leaving to go to get to Tarshish. And to, I mean, to get to Nineveh. And to go to Tarshish, it was 2,500 miles. So he had to go out of his way to do what God, to not do what God told him to do. Isn't that crazy? So, way over three degrees, right? It's like 35 degrees. You know, he was negative three degrees. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And so, so what, you, what you have is, is somebody who needs instruction, who needed direction, because if given the choice, he's going to do what he wants to do. Amen? You know, if not seeing of not seeing the value in what God said to do, or to have your own opinion as to, as to why it's not, you know, that important, or, or you know, or to, have, or to have your own opinion about something when, when you're under somebody is a dangerous place to be in. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, like I said, with, with, with being a uh, uh, PK and dealing with, with some of the things, like, man, when, it, it took me a while to learn the difference between my dad being my pastor and, and my, and my uh, father. It took me a long time to learn that because I am a, as I, I'm going to say as a Roberts man, but I am a very opinionated and a, and a very uh, self-sufficient person. You know, I think I, think I know everything. Amen? Amen? That's one. That's, 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 <laughs> think I know it. You know, if you, if you say something, I got something to say back. Amen? So, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so, and so, but it took me a while to learn that. It took me a while to not to not to 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 not have my own opinion as to as to what direction uh, I'm giving. When you think about it, it doesn't make no sense. If, somebody, if somebody's telling you to do something, you know, unless it's, unless you're absolutely sure it's going to like kill you or hurt you or do something, then 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 your opinion is is really null and void. It doesn't matter. Amen. So. So let's let's go to uh, to somebody. So that's somebody who needed direction. And there are some people who already know what to do uh, with with God's uh, uh, gifts and commandments. So we're going to turn to uh, Genesis 37. And again, I'm not we're not going to read the whole the whole because it's, it's pretty expensive. The stories of Joseph stands from five six chapters. So we're gonna I'm just gonna go over it, but. But uh, with Joseph, he, he had a gift from God of uh, interpretation, dream interpretation. And so he has a dream. Everybody knows the story. He has a dream uh, that he is going to rule over his brothers. And he's the youngest of the brothers, I believe. Youngest or second youngest? Second, second youngest, okay. And his brothers 
mm, not like that. They didn't, they didn't like that at all. And so I, I, I've, been, I've been mad at my family sometimes, my brother and sister. I ain't never, ever thought about throwing them in no well and acting like they was dead. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I was like, hey, yeah, he must have really got offended by what these, that, by a dream? All right. Can't go to sleep on your family. I'm, don't, be, don't sleep on these people. No, I'm just trying. So, he, uh, so, he's, so he's sold into slavery at 17 uh, for, for 20 shekels. 20 shekels. So I, I looked up shekels. I couldn't, I couldn't find a, a comparison of what a shekel was worth back then. But I know a new shekel in today's currency is uh, 27 cents on a dollar. So for today, in today's currency, he would have been sold for about five dollars and forty cents. Five. If, if my brother sold me for five dollars, he would he would catch hands so fast. Well, if I if I ever got out of slavery, he would he would catch it. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I don't even know if I would have the wherewithal that, that Joseph had. Good Lord, he does a bless somebody. Amen. Five dollars and forty cents. Man. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't, he didn't even buy, so he was sold into slavery at 17 for $5.40. And he didn't meet Pharaoh until he was 30 years old. 30. That is 13 years of life in prison and, and, in, and in Potiphar's house, too, as well, obviously, which, which led him to prison. And they got lied on. Oh, that's, that's the woof. That's, that's, that's. But, and I was looking, I was looking hard. I couldn't find anywhere in. In, in Genesis, where Joseph complained, where Joseph uh, was down on himself, and and and, and as if you're if you're if you're coming from, from I'm, for me, I don't always assume that even just because he didn't say it that I that he had to been down he had to been no, he didn't, you know why because he he had a vision from God, from from 17 he knew that he was supposed to be in a high place, yes. amen. So when you so when when you're trying to connect the two, when you're connecting Psalms to, when you know that you have a position that you're supposed to be in, you can't ever lose sight of that. In a prison cell, you can't lose sight of that. Amen. Remember, remember, uh, uh, brother Steve's, uh, Pastor Steve's testimony. In a prison cell. And and did you know, fun fact, that last week was his first time speaking uh, in front of a church. Last time preaching a sermon. His first time preaching a sermon. I did not know that. I did not know that. That man knocked me out on the floor. Amen. <laughs> I did not know that. Man, I was, I was, I was, man, you know, that's, that's. but you know what? He has a vision and he's walking it out. Amen. You know, he's putting himself in position to do what he's called to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the difference, the difference between Jonah and Joseph. Jonah heard the voice of God directly because he needed direction or else he would have done what he felt comfortable with doing. Amen? Jonah had a choice on his direction, and he chose wrong, you know? And it was in, it was in the belly of the great fish, and, and, uh, and then finally, you know, ended up doing what he was supposed to do. But Joseph, with the, with the gift of, uh, of dreams and interpretations, uh, just continued to do what God had blessed him to do. Amen. So the very thing that got him put in jail got him out of jail. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, um, and he was promoted. So for your goal for today is to find out what your position is. Find out what position you are in. Find out where you're positioned to be. Amen. And seriously think about it. Don't, don't, you know, go to KFC after church and be like, man. Get the itis, go to sleep on your dream. And, you know, don't, don't go, you know, watch me. Like me, I, 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 I tell myself, go home and binge watch uh, Punisher, you know. And uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not telling you all to go watch Punisher. I'm just saying I love it. And I, I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because <laughs> it might not be for you, you know. But... Uh, but, but don't go and talk yourself out of your goals. Don't talk yourself out of your position. You know, don't, don't say uh, it's too cold. Don't say uh, I'm not smart enough. Now, these are all things that we've heard before, right? Amen? 
Amen. But these are things that we continue to do. We don't really grasp the importance of speaking to ourselves and speaking to, you know, I talk to myself all the time, especially when I'm in the car. I'll be talking to myself. I'll be looking out the windows. I'll be making sure I stop talking when I get to, to lights. Start talking once I start driving, you know. And so, <laughs> so once you determined, once you've determined where you're positioned, figure out how to get in your position of destiny. Walk it out. Amen. Do some things. Take classes. You know, the things, these things, these things don't just happen because you believe. Amen. They don't just happen because, you know, you have faith. You know, if your faith doesn't promote you to action, then it's, what, is it, what is your faith for if it's not for, it's not for moving? So uh, meet people who are living your dream and learn from them. Right. Amen. Amen. So I already, one of, the, one of the things that I have going on, I have somebody in mind that I have to talk to this week, and we're going to get the ball rolling, Amen. you know, because uh, time is not stopping, you know. Time, man. And we don't, have, it's, and when you really start to think, you know, again, it's just more teaching and stuff that, like, uh, I know some of you in here have heard of uh, Driven by Eternity, and, and to realize that our time is really just, a bl- less than a blink of an eye, you know, a vapor, just, you know, remember when, when, when it got really cold and when everybody was taking the hot water and throwing it up in the air and, and just, it just, poof, just disappear, you know, that is, that is our, literally our life right now, you know, you think about Monday, like, oh, Monday, <sighs> we got a whole week until Friday, and then the weekend, and, 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 the, and then in, the, in, in reality, it's all, anyway, you know, how many, how many, how many, how many people are here be like, man, I, it's been that long? Have you ever been thought of something and be like, man, it's really been, you know, because that is, that's how fast it goes, and you just don't even realize it. So start now, guys. Start now. Find somebody. Learn from them. Uh, the Three Degrees Ministries is a great example of that. You know, they, they did their inaugural, inaugural um, meeting last weekend, the first time doing it. You know, they're walking it out. And then we're going to be a, a testament as to how, when it, when it gets to be a mega conference, we're going to be like, wow, we were, we were a part of that. We were the, we were the first. Amen. So don't get sidetracked when things get difficult and get uncomfortable. Stay focused, guys. Stay focused. Uh, like I said, I'm the biggest culprit as, as anybody. It is anybody. I've started a thousand diets. You know, I've joined quite a few gyms. Uh, I've done... I've done anything that I've, I've had a goal that I have succeeded and I have failed, and it has been my fault. Amen? Amen. Amen. And lastly, show someone else the way. Amen. Show someone else the way. If you know somebody who is trying to do what you do, who is, uh, uh, is positioned, or if you, if you know somebody who is trying to do something, and you know somebody who does, know what, to, who, who does what they're wanting to do, point them in the direction. Don't, don't keep all this to yourself. Don't keep, you know, uh, this information and stuff like that to yourself. Amen? Position someone else's life to be uh, victorious. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. That's all I have for y'all this morning. Praise you, Lord. I love you.